Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I'll tell you two companies who are having an amazing day, and that would be Microsoft and AMD. Microsoft's Stack event is unfolding, and there have been a couple of extremely interesting announcements. We'll get into the Agility SDK and a new shader model in just a second, but later on, I want to talk more about the collaboration that AMD is having with Microsoft for some of its tools which quite frankly is going to be extremely important, not just in the Xbox ecosystem, but could play a major contributing factor to AMD fighting in the desktop space. But yeah, let's first of all read some of the announcements. So as I mentioned just a moment ago, there is a new blog on uh, AMD's official webpage. I'll of course link it in the video description. And it starts out by telling us about Microsoft's DirectX 12 Agility SDK. This basically helps to reduce some of the uh, requirements for running DirectX 12 features, or at least the later ones. So now all you need is Windows 10 with the November 2019 update, or of course later. This means that you can run features such as mesh shaders, variable rate shading, hardware-based ray tracing, and so on, and appeal to more users. Furthermore, HLSL, high level shader language uh, model 6.6 has also been released. So again, you can check this out on the blog yourself, but there are several new features here. New atomic operations, dynamic resources, helper lane detection, compute derivatives, pack and unpack intrinsic, as well as wave size ray tracing payload access quantifiers as well and wave size is actually quite interesting as we were discussing this quite a bit recently with amd driver updates and how wave sizes you know smaller wave sizes like uh, wave 32 does seem to improve ray tracing performance a little bit so it'll be very interesting to see you know what can happen in the broader sense of this at least again in my personal opinion a Microsoft spokesperson, Brian Langley, who works at Graphics Group Program, who works, excuse me, as the Graphics Group Program Manager at Microsoft said, and I quote, continuing our strong partnership across PC and Xbox Series X and S, we are pleased to be working closely with AMD so we can evolve the DirectX to deliver new generation of gaming graphics with DirectX 12 Agility SDK, Shader Model 6.6, .6, and Direct Storage for PC. Now, direct storage, of course, is already part and parcel of the Xbox ecosystem. However, we're still waiting to see how this will play out on the PC. Obviously, direct storage, the main reason for its existence is to pull vast quantities of data from the SSD. And it's one of the reasons that the next generation consoles, be it the PlayStation 5 or the Xbox, in my opinion, are such a big deal. Sure, more T-flops, faster CPUs and all of that stuff is great, but ultimately one of the things that's been holding back the previous generation, at least in my opinion, and from talking to developers, although it's freely well spoken about, and that is just simply pulling data from the drives. Obviously the Xbox uh, One and the PlayStation 4, they use slower mechanical drives, and yeah, it just obviously meant you had seek times for data, which was particularly a problem for smaller files, and yeah, even larger files, obviously, not only do you need to pull that data from the drive itself, but you need to decompress it. With the Xbox and the PlayStation, you've now got uh, dedicated decompression blocks. So it means that you're freeing up a ton of CPU resources. So I wanna see how this looks on the PC, quite honestly. Um, particularly given this might, in a couple of years anyway, really reshape how uh, PC gamers kind of build their rigs. At a guess, I think that we're gonna kind of go down two routes. We're either gonna see, you know, like fast NVMe drives become prevalent for games, much like, I don't know, like 3D accelerator cards became the normal for, well, games, or the amount of VRAM and uh, main system memory might increase drastically. So, you know, an average gaming PC now has like 16 gigabytes of memory. A lot of gaming GPUs have eight gigabytes of memory, but all of this might change. And again, I don't really know how this is gonna look long-term, but it's a very interesting discussion to have, particularly with new game engines and new games which are coming out. Now, I have to say that the next thing that I'm gonna be talking about, or things, as there's quite a few, are perhaps 
some of the more interesting out of all of these announcements. And that's saying something, given that we're talking about a lot of cool stuff. In fact, I actually got a couple of emails from AMD themselves pushing this from their PR teams. And you know what? More power to them because this stuff is really cool. And it comes down to optimization for the console as well as the PC. As a small caveat, well, not a caveat, but just something to bear in mind, I also have an interview with AMD which is going to be uploaded next week onto the channel. Um, I've already done it, so it's a pretty fun interview, at least in my opinion, it's fairly long as well. However, there's gonna be editing and I've uh, agreed to their kind of like date of publication. So it's going to be, I don't remember if it's 28th or 29th, but yeah, it's basically, you know, mid next week. So it's a pretty fun interview. So if you're interested in tech and you know, how uh, collaborations, you know, uh, open ecosystems work, then well, you know what to do. Anyway, let's jump back into this, shall we? Because I'm starting to ramble. A really big thing now is that AMD and Microsoft will be collaborating on GPU open. If you're unfamiliar with GPU Open, and I do talk about this quite a lot next week with AMD directly, but basically it's kind of like a repository of really cool tech, like a lot of the Fidelity FX stuff, for example, which we'll talk about more in just a moment. And games developers are free to go in, grab it, tweak it, alter it. And it's basically kind of very open source. And in my opinion, this is really cool because it means that developers are much freer to be able to kind of tweak things and adjust them as required. Now, of course, Microsoft or a developer are not requiring, you know, you to use this, but it is a tool in your arsenal, so to speak. So one of the things that they're adding is Fidelity FX Denoiser, and this is for hardware-based ray tracing. So the denoiser allows specialized spatial temporal denoisers, and they are for different workloads. Shadow denoiser, which is designed for denoising a shadow mask for uh, ray tracing jitters. And there's also designed as a, a reflection denoiser. And guess what this is for? That's right, it's for making pancakes. No, not really, it's for denoising uh, reflections. Now again, this is now available for the Xbox and the PC, but wait, there is more. So both next generation consoles, the PlayStation and both Xboxes, utilize Zen-based processors, the basic Zen 2 class customized. And this means, of course, that developers want to learn how to squeeze the most out of these architectures. So Microsoft are also working with AMD for Ryzen processor optimization for developers. You can read on screen yourself, but this should allow developers to more easily squeeze the most out of the desktop performance of Zen uh, class processors, but also benefit the Xbox as well. Again, there is a ton of stuff to go through in this announcement and quite frankly, I could be here for at least another 30, 40, 50 minutes kind of picking through all of this stuff, but I will link all of it in the video description. So those who are more technically inclined can feel free to do that and maybe I'll do a, a deeper breakdown in the near future. But what I really want to talk about is just what this is going to mean for both Xbox as well as AMD, as there is a lot of stuff to unpack. And the most obvious thing is this is a great toolkit for Microsoft themselves. It allows, uh, well, basically empowering developers, which of course Microsoft are all in favor for. At the end of the day, if a developer is more familiar, for example, with uh, the PC ecosystem, then it's going to help them optimize or get a game running on the uh, Xbox. But this also is going to be very interesting from my perspective for you know the Radeon architectures on desktop as well as the CPUs from AMD, both Zen 2, which of course are the Ryzen 3000 series, and later processors such as the Ryzen 5000 series, which are Zen 3 based. So this is particularly interesting to me as well when it comes to the impact on desktop. Basically, every single PlayStation 5, every single Xbox, every single RX 6000 class GPU which is sold increases the user base of AMD's GPUs. And the reason that this is so important is it basically allows developers to get a lot more familiar with the architecture and squeeze more performance out of the lemon. And yeah, of course, ultimately this is going to impact how developers are familiar with the architectures. And it's also going to mean a lot of interesting questions perhaps in two, three years time when it comes to game optimization, simply because of the large install base of let's say the Xbox Series X. I'm gonna be very interested to see how this actually ends up playing out with uh, their competition with Nvidia, for example. From what I'm hearing, um, we're gonna put another video on this quite soon. Lovelace is a very impressive architecture, but 
yeah, RDNA 3 is faster. There is no bones about it from what I understand. In terms of traditional rasterization performance, it is faster than Lovelace. And this is simply because it's got two chiplets, 160 compute units total. And I'm fairly confident in this info because so many people have told me it. And Lovelace, yeah, I mean, it's, it's looking decent. But with that combined with optimization, thanks to what they're learning from, let's say, the Xbox or the PlayStation 5, it's going to be very interesting to see how um, this will impact the PC market in the longer term. In my personal opinion, we're looking at some major shifts upcoming in gaming. And, you know, I recently put out the video of Epic and Sony's collaboration, and I'm more, you know, confident in that than ever. That's all I'll say on that topic, because I don't want to kind of mix the streams or the beams or whatever. But, you know, in the wider ecosystem, there are a lot of things which are quite difficult um, for, you know, Xbox, AMD, NVIDIA, whomever to kind of sell to customers. It's really easy to say stuff that like, well, this graphics card runs your game at higher resolution or higher frame rates. It's really easy to do that, right? But just try imagining being a PR guy or girl and writing an elevator pitch, which is three seconds of perhaps someone who isn't so technically inclined. Yeah, sure. Uh, the majority of people who are watching this video are fairly technically inclined, I know, just from talking to a lot of you guys. But, you know, this is not the case for the average person. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. Everyone has, you know, their, their strengths and weaknesses. Like if I, I don't know, want my bo uh, boiler maintained, for example, I'm just like, okay, well, <laughs> I'm going to be calling, you know, some a specialist for that. Everyone has, you know, their strengths and their weaknesses. And it's quite difficult to kind of explain some of the, the major advancements we're looking at. I discussed uh, just recently too, you know, Microsoft's push for direct ML and how this framework is going to really fundamentally shift how, uh, and this is, you know, ML in general, not just Microsoft's contribu uh, contribution to it, how it could really shift games. But yeah, I think that there's going to be a lot of cool stuff which is upcoming and some of it isn't quite as tangible maybe as saying, well, look how many frames per second this is or 4K, 60 or whatever, particularly given even native resolution now is losing some of its meaning. It is more now around pixel quality, response time and just the stuff you know, the interactivity of a game, the level of physics, the, the intelligence of AI, you know, combatants or whatever, there's a lot more to it. And I think there's a lot of cool stuff which is going to be emerging. Anyway, I am rambling. And so I'm going to let you all go. Thanks very much for checking out the video. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.